All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. Now, today I'm taking you down to somewhere. I have been coming for seven years since I first got to Bangkok. I was gonna bring you here the other day in my last video with Auntie down the road, but as you saw, I got a little bit sidetracked with the food. So today I brought help with me. I'm down here with my good friend, Joe Parilla, and I wanna show him some of my favorite dim sum in the whole of Bangkok. Let's go take a look. So as you'll see, guys, hyper, hyper local, hyper, hyper, popular and the reason this place is so popular is because the chef owner and proprietor chef yip is actually from hong kong he used to run the very popular dim sum restaurant in the five star shangri-la hotel so what we've got is five star real deal with chinese dumplings at street food prices in a nice family run restaurant let's go this is the main man All right guys, so when you get down here, we've got, we've got a little bit of paper and a pen and you just tick off what you want. Now, it's actually got it in Thai, English and Chinese. All right, so you're not gonna have any trouble ordering, but they do speak English in here, so you can get them to do it if you want, right? So we're gonna go, we're gonna go Shalong Bao to uh, Ha Gao to Shu Mai, Shu Mai. We're gonna go two of them as well, two shrimp, uh, Chong Fun, two of those. Do you want anything sweet? Do you want to try the sweet purse, the lava bun or something? So we'll go lava bun as well. Custard, shall we? <laughs> yes. All right, so two, four, six, eight, ten, eleven. Mince, you can have a mince pork one, I don't eat them, the salabao, yeah? Barbecue. See, this is your first time eating dim sum, Joe. We'll go, we'll go mental. Yeah. All right, guys, so as you can see, we have an absolute beast on our hands. I'm so excited because Joe Parilla has never, ever, ever eaten dim sum before, as he tells me. So I thought I'd take him down to my favorite dim sum shop in Bangkok. And as the title says, it is not in Chinatown. My man, Chef Yip, Lung Yip, used to work at the Shangri-La Hotel. So you can see all the awards and certificates on the wall. He's also from Hong Kong originally. So this is proper Chinese dim sum. This isn't Thai dim sum like you'd get down in Phuket or Nakhon Si Tamarad. This is legit Hong Kong style dim sum. Obviously, I'm expecting a little bit of a Thai twist. I haven't been here in about two years, so I'm very, very excited. But I will run you through what me and Joe are getting. Let's go. All right, guys, so this for me is like, this is like liquid crack. Addicted is, the, is not the word for what I am. Dip mark. So we've got roasted chili paste with, it's basically just oil garlic that's been fried off and it's just absolutely insane. So I'm gonna stick a bit of that into my bowl. And we're gonna have this with our dumplings. We've also got, <laughs> We've also got some, uh, I believe it's black vinegar and soy sauce, but we will try it in a sec. Great black vinegar, there's no soy sauce in this, so. Black vinegar, as Joe just said, in England you're gonna be calling this a crispy chili, yeah? Crispy chili, or as a brand, laogama. Laogama, Every, everyone's favorite Chinese grandma. But this, this stuff is amazing. If you haven't had it before, you need, and you can get it in Europe, so make sure you find this. Okay, so in Thailand we call this Gui Tiao Lard. So this is prawn, so this is a rice paper, I'd say like open noodle wrap around some prawns. And then this is Gui Tiao Lard Mordang, so this is the red pork version, so this is like char siu. In China, I believe they're called Xiong Fan. All right, so obviously in China you know these as shu mai. In uh, Thai, they're called kanom jib, dipping snack. These are prawns and pork. These are pork and mushroom. These ones are hard gel. So these are the glass paper whole prawns. My favorite dim sum probably of all time, unless these are on the table. Xialong bao, soup dumplings. So these are pork soup dumplings, sometimes known as Shanghai dumplings, Taiwanese dumplings. Din Tai Fung has nothing on this place, I assure you. All right, Joe, so what I want to do, mate, if it's all right with you, 
is I want to start you on what I think, although I think you'll enjoy most of it, I think this you'll enjoy le least, just because there's nothing wrong with it, very well made, but it's the sweetest, and I know like yeah, me, you don't really like sweet, right? Not my, not my thing. So have a go with the Mordang. I'm going to start on these, am I? Yeah, I'm going to start on the uh, ones you're going to like the least. Starting me on the worst. I mean, it I looks mean that's good. subjective, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, it looks good, but we've said we've said this before. Like we have salty palates, and if you have a sweeter palate, like you're gonna like these. Don't just because we say it's our least favorite doesn't mean it's bad, right? Like we, just, we should caveat that. Anyway, and you haven't tried it yet. <laughs> and I haven't tried it yet, <laughs> which is also important. Mm. The flavor of the mudang is strong, actually. You can taste the pork coming through there. I I love the texture of the stuff that like, not sticky, but the soft rice, what is it, rice? Rice flour, flour. I think there's a touch of mung bean flour, and I okay. think they're using lard as well. Okay. Um, to give it that sort of See, this is how silkiness. much of an amateur I am. I know absolutely nothing about dim sum. So it's a, it's, a, it's a new experience for me, but what I think it needs, and you're right, is just a touch. A little bit of that black vinegar, that yeah? Black vinegar. I think that will make it more aligned to what I like. Okay, that takes on to another level. It is great. Should have tried it first, as we said. It is great. With the black vinegar, perfect. Yeah, I think I think if you try the prawn one, right? I think if you try the prawn one, you're going to like this more. Because although it's the same sauce, uh, it hasn't got the sweet mordang inside. Sure. And actually, yeah, you can taste the sweetness coming from that pork. Gonna do another dip in the black vinegar. Juicy prawn in the middle. It is less sweet. Works really nicely again with that black vinegar. I do prefer the prawn to the pork. Right, but before Joe eats absolutely everything, I'm gonna go in with the chong bum. Oh yes. Like texturally, broken record on over. Texture, you've got a really soft, almost pillow like rice noodle wrapper, and then you've got a, a drier, but it's not dry, but like a, a lean pork inside. So you've got the like balance of the textures. It is a touch sweet, but Joe's right. Get a little bit of that Chinese black vinegar on there, and it really balances out. I'll try the prawn one. Whole lumps of prawn, they're not, right? Not like minced up. Minced up, just fat lumps of juicy prawn. And that one is a lot less sweet, um, even though it's the same dressing. But yeah, you're right, you do need that vinegar for sure. All right, so literally my favorite dim sum of all time hagao, glass, paper. Mm. Prawn dumplings. I love this. I think you know me by now, guys, on this channel. Any sort of chili oil or paste is for me, but the fact it's got the crispy garlic going through it as well, I could literally just drink this with the vinegar, I'd be a happy man. These are incredible. They're almost translucent, homemade wrappers, plump, again, same as the Xiong Fun, plump pieces a fresh shrimp. Almost cloud-like. Softness. Mm. All right. I'm gonna eat the shalong bao. So if you're not familiar with the shalong bao, these are soup dumplings. So Din Tai Fung are really famous for these. I actually went to eat these in Taipei. Um, so how they make them is you solidify stock basically by boiling down the bones so much that there's so much gelatin and collagen in the soup that when you then refrigerate it goes into like little blocks you then cut that up put it into the dumpling wrap it up and then when you boil it it melts and then this one i'm going to cut open just, just to show you like the soup all pours out and you're left with a little bit of mince you should eat this in one go so i'll eat one Put a bit of that crispy chili on top. Now you might be thinking if you're an avid Xiaolongbao eater, where is my julienne ginger to go on the top? Well, they've actually got the ginger inside in the soup in here. These might be thicker than you're used to. 
And that's one thing I've always found in here. The, the dough for the Shalong Bao, especially at the bottom, is a lot thicker than you get in a lot of other places. I, for one, absolutely love it. Again, all about textures. You've got the thick, chewy dumpling wrapper. You've got that beautiful stock inside. And then you've got that fatty, minced pork. I'm going to eat one whole. There's no comparison here. And you guys know I love like Bunarat dim sum in Phuket. There is no comparison between this and Thai dim sum. Uh, this is serious. So you've got nothing to compare these two, but for me. Uh, you can see as you lift them up, the stock in the inside. Mm. It explodes in your mouth. I didn't expect there to be so much stock. And then there's also minced pork inside. Slightly sweet on the stock, but that's such a fun... I mean, it's fun, right? That's a fun one to eat. Yeah, Let's yeah. say you bite it and it just bursts. But you are right, Gary said as well, like the base, is it the base or is it the top where they folded it over? Because it is slightly thick yeah. and I think that takes away from it a little bit, but it's very delicious, very tasty. Try this one with the crispy... With the crispy chili? Mm. That, sorry. That is much better balanced. Yeah, it's, it's not more, spicy at all. It's not spicy at all. It's more like a, it's a very savory flavor. I would say umami flavor, if that means anything to you. But the reality is, it's just like MSG on steroids. And it is absolutely delicious. Right, all I've got left, guys, is the two different shumai. So all I'm gonna do with this, the prawn one, I'm just gonna go into the vinegar. For 45 baht, it's quite incredible just the amount of the fresh prawn, of the fresh shrimp. It's perfectly cooked, it's just been steamed, so it's not all rubbery. You've got the perfect amount of fat from the pork mince. Winner, I think, to be honest, Joe, I don't think I could have taken you to a better first dim sum spot in Bangkok. Right guys, as you know, I don't usually do sweet too much, but seeing, I'm pretty sure they claim in here to be the, like, the creators of the lava bun. I'm, I'm almost positive, or Chef Yip did maybe when he was at the Shangri-La Hotel. So, as Joe pointed out when he just ate his pork bun, I don't like pork buns. Barbecue pork buns, uh, salapao morang, salapao morsap, they're always too sweet for me because savour and sweet, it just doesn't really work for me. Whereas these are just sweet, sweet. Mm. So this is a steamed, this is a steamed bread, essentially. If you want to see how they're made, I actually have a video where I actually make them myself at a bun shop which I'll link down below so you can check that out. But that works so much better for me because the inside is like a rich, sweet, sugary custard. And then it's got a sweet outside rather than it just being like a savory inside and then a sweet, a savory inside and then a sweet outside, if that makes sense. So for me, it's, it's not just the food in here, it's the whole vibe. It's just how we like it, open air, fan, no air con, super, super simple, hustle and bustle. It's absolutely packed from the moment it opens to the moment they close. This is a Tuesday afternoon. Don't even think about coming here on a Saturday. You're talking hour long queues outside, queues down the street. But I just love, as I say, the whole ambiance of the place. Outside, you've got all the bamboo steamers going 100 miles an hour. They're, they're, they're steaming thousands and thousands of different dim sum per day. Hundreds and hundreds of customers. Everyone's super, super friendly. Even though it's like a real local, local mum and pop shop house restaurant, all the cooks are all wearing like the traditional white chef outfit. So Chef Yip is definitely, definitely at the top 
of his game. So I implore you guys to get down here, check it out for yourselves. But we are not done yet because we're about to go to another Chinese shop house and we're going to be getting some Guangdong Southern Chinese handmade egg noodles. All right, guys, so now we're on to our second stop. Handmade Chinese noodles, handmade bak mi kiao mu dang. It's only a few doors up from the dim sum restaurant. How we're gonna fit it in, I'm not so sure, um, but we will do our best. You ready, Joe? I'm looking forward to this one. We walked past it when we came. The handmade noodles look awesome. 